Jeez, is there a pin drop? Good morning, it is 9 a.m. December 6, 2017. Welcome to the City Council meeting. Let the record reflect that all council members and officials are present. Please stand for the invocation, then the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father in heaven, we beseech thee to bestow thy blessings on this council and its members as we meet today. We continue to be grateful for our abundance of the spiritual and material gifts you have provided for us and ask thy infinite wisdom in all our undertakings. We pray that our members will continue to grow in wisdom and understanding, therefore benefiting our society. We also ask thy gift of abiding love enfold all the people of the world, providing us all freedom from fear and want and peace and tranquility reign on earth as in your heaven. For this we say, Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. Thank you. And we don't have a bunch of proclamations this morning, but we do have a special service award. We do. Um, we have a 15-year service award for our utility director, Tom Jackson. Um, we could spend a lot of time talking about all of the various projects and operations uh, that he's been involved in over the years, um, but we're not going to do that. Um, we all know about the RO plant. We all know about the Hendrickson Dam, the, all the improvements to our uh, wastewater treatment plant all of the uh, improvements to the water treatment plant, um, our utility crews. Um, we get updates on that all the time. But there are some other things that you may not know about Tom. So I'm going to tell him. <laughs> um, he used to be, way back when, an inspector for DEP. So he brought that knowledge to us. And that's very important because uh, when you have run water plants and sewer plants, you gotta keep up with all the standards and compliance, so we're very, very careful about all that. He also is a, uh, a very avid bicyclist, mm -hmm. and when I say bicyclist, he, he, he bicycles zillions of miles without any trouble. He also plays the violin, and he plays it quite well. And he's played it for us at our staff meeting on occasion. But most important, the other tidbit you don't know about him is that when he retires, he needs to go on Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> he has the most unbelievable knowledge of the most useless facts there is. <laughs> and he will tell you them, and he tells it at the staff meeting. So Tom, thank you very much for your 15 years. Thank you. Want your plaque or no? Yes, I do. That's why I'm here. You gotta squeeze it. Look. You're... Thank you. Well, I'm losing it. Already. Yeah, you there you go. Okay. Government issue. You gotta yeah. be very wait, careful. Wait, wait. Turn that. around. You get a picture or info sheet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have found over the years it's important to know who the third king of Lithuania was because when the city manager asks me something and I don't know the answer, I can take him off track with that usually. <laughs> and and uh, I want to I thank everyone. First of all, I want to thank this council and this mayor for uh, their leadership and their vision for the utility department, especially this council, because we spent some full days and afternoons driving to the water management district. Uh, we were talking about that this morning to, times. to get our funding and to get our recognition and to get our dues. I want to thank Steve Adams, who's not here. He's at a, actually a Peace River board meeting this morning. He recruited me from DEP and he hired me and I'm sure there were days he regrets that, but uh, he's still one of the smartest men I know and he's one of the champions of the utility department. Um, the city manager, what can I say? 
The man is an inspiration, he inspires us, he teaches us, and he makes me a better manager daily and a better person. And I thank him for that. It has been a joy these last 15 years. And finally, the men and women of the utility department, they are the utility department, I'm not. I, get, I put a suit on and I stand up here and I wrote, report to you who they are and what they do. But they are really the heart and soul and believe me, I've never, being a DEP, I looked at thousands of systems and the reason I came here is I never saw a more dedicated and professional bunch of folks than these folks and thank them. Thank you. You're sticking around for a while, right? No, you guys need a plant filled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I, we gotta cut the ribbon on that plant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, now would be the time if your name is in for a board or committee position and you would like to quickly introduce yourself, now would be the time. Would anybody whose name is in the running for a board or committee appointment take this podium over here and quickly introduce yourself? My name is Sam Hoagland. I live at 2716 Ryan Boulevard in Punta Gorda. I'm a resident of this town. I love it here and I've applied for a, uh, a board position. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Anybody else like to introduce themselves this morning? Okay, seeing none, we will recess as the city council and shortly reconvene as the CRA with our new member. Thank you. We're not changing seats or anything, are we? Okay, good. <laughs> I checked that. Okay. <laughs> I just thought of it now. But I don't recognize Charlie in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> I, Thank you. I, you need to be out there in your Christmas tie. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. Really. Well, I get a chance now to wear a uh, suit and tie one time a month. <laughs> <laughs> or well, you could uh, casual up without the tie like the rest of the okay. CRA <laughs> commissioners. <laughs> okay, let's call the CRA meeting to order. Uh, let the record reflect that all commissioners are present and the executive director. And uh, first we have cit citizens' comments on CRA agenda items, which would be the project status report for December 2017, the approval of the minutes of November, uh, an invoice, a legal invoice, and the Harrell Court Center parking signage. If anybody would like to speak on those items, now would be the time. Please take this podium over here. You have three minutes. Would anybody like to speak on CRA agenda items? Okay, seeing none, we will move into the project status report. Howard. Howard Kunick, CRA director. <clears throat> So this is the uh, marina uh, status report. Uh, we always, we're now going to show the year before at this time. Um, our dock master has, is focusing uh, more on the monthly rentals at this point, and, but he still has a lot of people waiting in the wings. And once we fix the, the docks that were damaged by Irma, he can fill up those slips as well. And the pump out vessel activity. We're on par with a year ago. <coughs> the uh, fresh market, the agripreneur <coughs> garden moves along. Uh, the boxes are, have been built and um, we're now doing the uh, irrigation concrete pads and bricking and then uh, it'll, there's a nice article about it in the paper recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. FPNL. Um, they hope to now be done uh, middle of January, so uh, the material's coming, and uh, they'll be getting those projects completed. Uh, Gilchrist Park Area 1 is substantially complete, so that means now the park has been uh, turned over to us. Uh, the uh, electricity at the pavilion at the uh, pavilion has been fixed. Um, we do have some material uh, that we're gonna try by hopefully by the end of the week, we'll see, to dim 
some of the uh, lighting, especially along the residences, not the Harbor Walk yet, because we've got mixed feelings about that. Some people love the added lighting along the Harbor Walk, but at least we're gonna look at the lighting along the residences to see if uh, we might wanna dim that a little. And we have some material that Public Works is gonna put up there to see how it goes, see what kind of comments we get back. Um, but we still have some closeouts we need to do uh, with the contractor and FDOT before the project is officially closed out. And we still have Durant Street to do. Playground uh, permit's been issued, so they can commence uh, once they get the structures uh, in play. Uh, here, they can then just build it. <coughs> it shouldn't take too long to build that. I think they're talking about end of February around there, right? Still? Yeah, yeah still around the end of February. Anybody know about the restrooms at Gilchrist Park? Never heard about it. Have yeah, you heard about the restrooms at Gilchrist Park? Uh, we did get, uh, uh, whoops, let me go back. That's a restroom. So uh, we did get the, uh, we'll get the formal approval on the uh, getting it out of the velocity zone, at least the ones by the playground, uh, February 14th. We are moving along with finishing the design and we wanna bid that out. Um, we are working on the LOMAR, the letter of map revision to take the other restrooms by the new pavilions out of the uh, velocity zone. We'll see if we can accomplish that before we rebid that. However, in the meantime, we are getting quotes for temporary restrooms, uh, probably a trailer type uh, and they'll, they're due December 13th, so they'll probably be within my purview to approve. Everybody okay with that? Yep, absolutely. Yep. Okay, so, <laughs> so we absolutely. will uh, sign off on that very quickly and get some temporary restrooms in there. Mm -hmm. But we're moving along on that. Library, the uh, DRC, our Development Review Committee, uh, it looks like we plan to review the plans on December 15th. Yeah. And uh, our utilities crews are gonna go back into the site over the next, uh, through January, and um, finish the refilling of that one area that needs to get. We have to dewater, and uh, believe it or not, there's, especially on a high tide, there's still water in there. Hmm. Even all those. Haven't had any rain in a while. Do we have any kind of a ballpark date for breaking ground officially? I, I wouldn't <laughs> venture. I keep getting the questions. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't even venture because, you know, we got to approve the plans, the design, uh, the, the, the general contractor, the uh, construction manager has to go out for bids, cut construction manager at risk, and uh, it, it'd be a little while. I think at the Economic Development Partnership lunch, when Travis Mortimer presented, I believe he said sometime in 2018. That's all. He, that's all the more. 2018 would be. <laughs> that gives them a whole year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Questions for Howard? Can you ask uh, just a comment um, that uh, last Saturday at the Founders Day City Manager's Bicycle Tour. Um, you did a great job, Howard, on entertaining the group. And I know that everybody that participated knows well uh, when Pedal and Play in Paradise will be. Um, March the 9th and 10th, Is, am I correct? March he kept, 9th. He kept remembering that. He kept Friday pushing night, that on Saturday, ride. trying to get everybody to participate. But the, the feedback from all uh -huh. the participants, and there were over 100 people there, was they loved the Harbor Walk and they loved the width of it to accommodate pedestrians and bicyclists and, and all of the activity without people bumping into each other and that kind of thing. So um, for those people that said, well, it's too much concrete, it really is um, very conducive to activity. So, and the, and the people there really appreciated it. <coughs> Any other questions or comments for Howard? 
on the project status report? Nope. Okay, next item of business, <coughs> we have approval of the minutes. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. And next we have a legal invoice. Everybody had a chance to review? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Need a motion? Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the invoice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. And next we have Harold Court Center parking signage. <clears throat> Good morning for the record. Mitchell Austin, Urban Design. Um, I was asked to prepare, uh, staff was asked to prepare a presentation regarding uh, signage relative to Harold Court Center, specifically uh, related to its use as a parking garage. Um, so this de presentation details what's existing and, and what could be um, on the parking garage to better identify it as a parking facility. Um, in the built environment today, we have uh, a number of wayfinding signs that direct people to the facility, <clears throat> as well as identify it as a public parking facility. Uh, Urban Design staff did create uh, a number of years ago uh, a downtown public parking brochure, a guide. Um, the original intent of that production of that document was to allow it to be used by area businesses for their purposes. Um, to my knowledge, nobody's adopted it, um, but it exists and is available if, uh, if businesses wanted to help their customers identify where public parking was in the city. <clears throat> On the building itself, um, we, we do a pretty good job of, uh, of identifying the, the businesses. However, the only signage identifying this facility as a public parking garage, the only signage on the building is at the entrance to the parking garage itself, the vehicular entrance. Um, and this, of course, is located on Herald Court, which is a local street. So on 41 northbound and on 17 northbound, um, there, there is no identification of that building, which to many people does just look like a building, not a parking garage, um, that, that it is not public parking. Um, so what staff focused on based on the, the council discussion uh, regarding the identification of the building as, as public parking was uh, what could we do to provide more effective building signage? Um, we looked at, at a number of uh, municipalities up and down the coast and Fort Myers, uh, the city of Fort Myers recently redid, they did rehabilitation projects on both of their public parking garages downtown and as part of that project, uh, they installed new signage, identi better identifying the, the public parking garages as such. And uh, those, those projects included three signs per garage. Because it was wrapped up in a bigger project, the costs were just line items for the signs. So they said they were about $15,000, probably fifteen dollars to $30,000 all in cost for those uh, signs. <clears throat> and taking their example, and only their example, just for the constraints of time and to get the discussion started, um, we applied those to the, uh, to the city of Punta Gorda's uh, Herald Court Center to see what they would look like. <clears throat> and these are these uh, photoshopped images. The sign is to scale. Um, it's uh, approximately 120 inches tall. That's 10 feet tall and about uh, three and a half feet wide. So that, that's all city staff has on this. Um, is there any way that those can be changed as far as the color on the fascia? Certainly, certainly. Because the, I think that blue looks absolutely horrible on the building with the soft colors that are all muted in. And I think it, if we could get something that was even um, a green that was um, complementary to the green that's on the building, it would really look a lot better. Yeah, that, that's, that's entirely possible. The, the blue color used by the city of Fort Myers just matches the mm -hmm. blue color in the, uh, the standard sort of international, ISO international symbols for, uh, for public facilities. I mean, what we've done, we've done more of the same, stuck it on the building, stuck it on the wayfinding signs, it's all been flat. 
um, not getting as much attention. Go back to the slide right before. Yes. My only concern with that right there, I think it, I don't know that it should be on, it maybe should be on the, uh, the north corner because I would hate to think people should take a left there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> so maybe on the other end of the building on Harold Court, because you see the no turn there and then it's like, oh, park. You know what people are gonna do. They're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna do it. So, I don't mind. I like the way that it, it. What do you call that? Projects. Yeah, projects out into the roadway. I think that's important, but definitely on the other side. And crazy enough about the tree lighting, I kept saying Harold Court, Harold Court. Three people asked me, where is Harold Court? Mm -hmm. And I have to say, it's the street right behind the back side of River City Grill. That's Harold Court. Like they don't identify the street. Mm -hmm. name so I don't know if there's something to be done with that as well Jaha um, the, the main people um, who brought uh, brought this issue up were businesses along 17 and so I think you know like she's saying that in a way that people also coming in a direction they can see it now one thing in terms of projection maybe even having I mean of course like the color yeah most most definitely but even maybe a P this doesn't necessarily have to have a large park in all areas, but just I think the P would let people know it's parking without it looking so obtrusive. Also, that's just I would agree with that. Mitchell, would you uh, you anticipate these being uh, lit? Uh, the the example from Fort Myers is uh, illuminated. It's actually uh, backlit channel letters, so it's not direct illumination. Um, it, it, the signs glow, uh, essentially. Um, I would so, think that so that, that uh, is that, an important factor, really. Uh, yeah, especially given the, the number of restaurants that we have downtown, the importance of that in the business community. We have a lot of facilities over if, there If night. Senator Stuby is effective uh, in uh, getting uh, daylight save or uh, standard time as a uh, universal thing in Florida, <laughs> you know, it, it'll be darker earlier more often. Nancy? Um, I'm going to put throw a wrench in this. I think it looks awful. I don't think it. I don't think this fits with the character of our community. It, it might fit with Fort Myers or New York City or someplace else, but I just don't think the character of the signage is is befitting of this community. Um, I, I've talked to numerous residents who also feel the same way, and I think um, I'd like to see an example of on the top, underneath the cupola um, having some bronze lettering that might say public parking. So the building is identified as public parking. Um, potentially they can be illuminated at night just like the Charlotte Harbor Event and Conference Center name is. Um, but uh, something that's tasteful, but it fits the character of the, the building and the community and it doesn't, I just feel this is putting some kind of um, uh, I don't know, humdrum, major metropolitan community feel on a uh, building that it's not our community. Um, so I, I'm not in favor of this. I, I, I agree, we need to do something. I don't mind necessarily the P that sticks out by the, the entry, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because we do need to ident identify the entry, but I think we could find a, a more creative way to identify the building as a, a public parking, um, because that's what it, that is what it is. And we, and, we have a tasteful sign on the north side that says the city of Punta Gorda. We could use that same lettering and put it on different corners of the building. So it's identified all the way around as public parking. I think with that though, um, if we just put the P by the entrance, people are already gonna be by it before they, they know to turn. And I think that's the issue that, that we have. Um, I, I think what Mitchell, you know, he just used that as an example, but we could make it look however we thought it would fit with the nature of our community. Uh, th this, <coughs> I, I wouldn't, um, this one doesn't yeah. work for me. Um, I'm just one of seven people here. But um, I think we can do a better job of making this look like something that is Punta Gorda and unique to Punta Gorda. Gary? Okay, first of all, I don't think the seven of us are too far off from what your point, Nancy. I think we have a catch-22 or a quandary that we also put on ourselves uh, and just justifiably because we do want to keep the character of the city, but if you want projection, you have to have a certain, if for want of a better word, certain obnoxiousness to catch the attention, <laughs> you, know, you know, if you understand the saying. And I don't like this either. Okay. Um, I, and as uh, um, Glenn pointed out, may, maybe it could be the color or what have you. 
The problem is getting people to know where her court is. The across the street from here, you basically you have CenturyLink, which is kind of a an office type thing, and you have time that has its own parking facility along with Wells, Wells Fargo. <coughs> and then you have Sandra's that's always had a problem with parking. Uh, and we've, you know, you can go down the alley and there's two spots that are public parking, but really Herald Court parking is where you would to be available to them. So, and then you have what, you have the main drag. And it's going to get even worse when that area gets developed. That's right. Okay, which means that this is going to be even more important. Um, so I think we're opening up the conversation, but I think we need to be very careful uh, and take our time. We're going to have, I agree with Nancy wholeheartedly, we need to be creative. And, and I agree with uh, Lynn that we need to have the right colors. But at the same time, if you have too much of the right color, then it kind of blends in and you don't see it. And that's what I, where I'm saying is our catch-22 mm -hmm. is. So we've got the conversation. We've got creative staff. I think we've opened up the conversation. So from my perspective, I would ask uh, uh, Mitchell to, uh, you know, put on his uh, next hat, which we've seen him do many times before, and start working on a, on a solution for Punta Gorda uh, proper. But I think we're going down the right track. Okay. We work long and hard for the design of this building. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would say that the universal P would get people's attention. And I think, um, I think that uh, you were right completely that it should be on the right si side, uh, the north side of the building. But um, it does need to be in keeping with the building and uh, the character of Punta Gorda. Yep. Kay. So is everybody or most people okay with the P sign? You don't want projection at all. Oh, I, um, I don't necessarily um, wouldn't mind projection as long as it somehow fit the character. I, I know, Jane, what you're talking about, um, how much work went into the mm -hmm. design of this and making it look like we, it wasn't a humdrum parking garage, right. and down to the picking of the colors. That's right. There was, uh, um, and I know I was, Team Panagorda spent a lot of hours Remember. working on picking the colors. Um, so I'd really want it to, however that fits. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that was his intent, but you know, yeah. this, was, this was the start of the discussion, so. It, and, it, and it certainly got the discussion started. Yes. So. Correct. So we, you have your direction now? We know what we don't want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, and my suggestion was just to try to find another want. way to do something that was, I wouldn't even mind if, if the, the, yep. these uh, cupolas yes, actually said public parking above them. It could be very tasteful and, and on numerous ones um, so that it. I the, think too many words, though. We struggle with that with the businesses, the sign plan for the building. Mm -hmm. Too many words is too many words. We I mean, keep well, I'm just saying Whatever. to at least let people know that this is a parking garage. Mm -hmm. Maybe one thing also, oh. if we just see what it looked like if you replaced <coughs> those parks with peas and just see, we can come back and see how that looks to yeah. us. Because yeah. on one level, one level, we do want it to match our other hand, the universal blue P is what people recognize as parking. And so if it was like a more subdued P, it may be possibly okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, uh, certainly it can bring back a variety of examples. Um, there may be some combination of facade signage and, and projecting signage that really fits the character of the building better. Um, the larger projecting sign could be redesigned in such a way that it more fits the character of the building so that it's not as, as glaring a, that doesn't fit. Um, Can we so get bigger street things. signs just for Harold Court on either end, bigger? Uh, certainly Public Works can explore that to see what, that would uh, be great too. what they can support there because then that would be just another way to get people's attention. Like, oh, that's, dif you know, it's different, it's bigger, mm -hmm. it's more noticeable. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this reminds me of something I'd see where, um, I think of when I used to work in New York City, there's lots of signs that are like that and, and you're competing with mm -hmm. lots of other signs. So you're really trying to stand out amongst all of the signs. And um, we don't have that here. Mm -hmm. So it's, what is it that, here, and then we're going to move on. Okay. Part of the, the catch 22 is we're a community that has a lot of signs. It's been pointed out in council before. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm getting to is this, we would like to maybe minimize projection, but we're going to need projection 
just to get somebody's attention. The question is, how do you do that with sufficient subtlety to not avoid the character? To me, that's what the what the difficult uh, assignment is. And uh, uh, Mitchell has already said maybe a sign projection sign could be designed that's not just a you know that's more into the character of it that that type of thing. So I think we need to explore those type of things. But we need to be able to project that this facility is available for parking for today and for the future. But we need to do it in a acceptable way. And that's that's we've we've put that burden on ourselves. So now we've got we've got it we've got to deal with it. And I think we want to deal with it properly. So So you have your charge. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, citizens' comments on CRA. Would anybody like to speak on the Community Redevelopment Agency? Now would be the time. You have three minutes. Please state your name for the record. <clears throat> Thank you, Michael Haymans. I apologize for my voice. I'm recovering from the flu last week. The, uh, I'm here to speak uh, to the uh, phase one of the Harbor Walk redesign. Thank you very much for, uh, for the city opening the pat park back up, even if it wasn't ready. The people who gather on Thursday nights in the park have been gathering there for almost 30 years, uh, and we found during the year of reconstruction how fragile that gathering, that group really is, despite its being uh, uh, known across the nation and throughout uh, the music uh, scene as the gathering place uh, in Punta Gorda, which is our Thursday night jams that we have. The, uh, it started with just a handful of people and during the winter times, it can, there can be a thousand people there. Uh, and, uh, and so, and that during the year of reconstruction, we got scattered to the wind and, and frankly, I'm in uh, fear that it won't come back very well very easily. I've seen kinds of activities happen in the park that got changed and moved over the years. Uh, we used to have volleyball down there that got moved and that just completely fell apart. And so, and so thank you for opening it back up so that we've got a home that people can count on to be there for these grassroots gatherings of music. Uh, thank you for taking care of the lighting. Uh, that was a problem. It was, uh, and I understand how it happened and, and what went down and Thank you for making that correction. Uh, thank you very much for taking on to have temporary bathrooms because right now people who show up there can only stay until they've got to go, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And, uh, and so, the, the, and there's people of all ages that show up for these music events and they, there's no bathroom facility, they can't stay and it's a problem. It's not just a problem for, for that, but it's a problem for the use of the park during the day also. So thank you for helping to take care of that. The only remaining issue that I have for you, and I know my time is about up, is, is that there needs to be some accommodation for parking on the grass, at least a portion of the grass area on Thursday nights. There are people who have equipment and chairs that need to get there, and although there's a lot of additional parking, it's not convenient parking close. There's also times when the wind's blowing so hard that those, that those uh, vehicles act as wind buffers so that you can actually stay in the park and play despite the wind blowing. Uh, this is a park that's had cars in it since there have been cars. This isn't a new thing, and it's not a matter of a design feature. It's a rule. There are ballards that can be moved uh, when we want to have access for vehicles, there's a sign that says authorized vehicles only. So we know that there's at times that it's appropriate to have vehicles in there. And at least on Thursday evenings for this grassroots effort that has been going on for 30 years, that is more fragile than you think, they need some accommodation for that to allow some parking in there. Please allow on Thursday nights parking within the grass that's outside, of, that's within the area, that's uh, outside of the, the sidewalks, so that there's just a smaller grass area, but it, it really would be appropriate, and uh, we deserve that accommodation for this tradition that we have of music in Punta Gorda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else like to speak on the CRA? Any other <coughs> citizens' comments? Commissioner comments, we'll start with Gary. Uh, not at this time. Uh, welcome, Charlie. Good, Good thank you. Thank you. No comments. <laughs> Great. I want to welcome Charlie aboard. Likewise. Thank you. <laughs> Likewise, Tim Support. 
<laughs> five. I'll and, add and, a fifth. <laughs> and, and in turn, I would uh, I would uh, thank the board for accepting the county's nomination of me for this position. I'm very proud to be part of this organization, this board. Thank you. You're welcome, Martin. With that, we are adjourned. Okay, we are now back in session as the City Council, and the first is 3A Public Hearing GA 07-17. Yes, this is the first reading of an ordinance, which I'll read by title only. An ordinance of the City of Punta Gorda, Florida, amending Punta Gorda Code Chapter 7, Building Regulations, by amending Article 1, Building Board, amending Section 7-3, Powers and Duties, amending Section 7-3.1, Penalties, Restitution, Fines, and Costs, Article Roman Numeral 2, Building Contractors, amending Section 7-12, Application and Fees for a Certificate of Competency, amending Section 7-13, Action Against Certificate Holders, and amending Article Roman Numeral 3, Building Codes and Regulations, amending Section 7-31, Additions, Amendments, and Modifications to Building Code, amending Section 7-32, Violations of Building Code and Penalties, amending Section 7-35, Building Numbering, amending Article Roman Numeral 5, um, floodplain Management Code, Chapter 1, Administration, it, adding a new Section 101.6, Disclaimer of Liability, amending Article Roman Numeral 5, Floodplain Management Code, Chapter 2, Definitions, amending Section 202, Definitions, Article Roman Numeral 5, Floodplain, floodplain Management Code, Chapter 3, Flood Resistant Development, amending Section 307.8, non-structural fill in coastal high hazard areas, zone B, providing for conflict and severability and providing an effective date. Thank you. Good morning, Randall Cole, Chief Building Official. This was just a rewrite of Chapter 7 in an effort to bring it up to date, eliminate some conflicts, and further come into agreement with the county regulations concerning contractor activity since we work so closely with them on unlicensed, unpermitted activity. We wanted the penalties to be closer aligned with theirs. There is one change that uh, I noticed after that was advertised, and this was at section 7-31, paragraph B, item B. That last line, it, it, where the 48 hours is struck out, um, actually it should be struck out from and containers that become full shall within, and then the entire rest of the second line. The timeline for that activity is listed in the paragraph below item C. So this is page, you have page numbers there? I'm sorry, page 7-25 actually, at the top. The 20, oh. So that would be page, agenda page. Oh. 7-25. I think it might be easier to look it up by the section number, 7-31. 31 or 25? Sorry, I thought you said 31. 7-31, section 7-31. Yeah, we're on page. And what letter number? B, with the paragraph that begins in addition to the above requirements, mm -hmm. the entire after the after container, then you see the strike out, mm -hmm. and then where it says containers that are full shall be emptied, the balance of that paragraph struck out, since that's addressed in the paragraph under the following item of C. Randy, could you read the way it should read, please? In addition to the above requirements, containers that are full shall be emptied. Oh, okay. I see where it is. Okay. I see where it is. So page sixty. One and 60, 60 and 60, 61 and 62, or 60 and 61. Okay, so all contractors and owners shall provide and maintain during construction soil erosion barriers to prevent 
So that stays. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then the following paragraph are the penalties for non-compliance of that section. Okay. So you're doing away with all of that and containers that become full shall within 48 hours strike all of that next part of that paragraph? Yes, because we've rewritten it in item one under C in the paragraph above that to be 24 hours rather than 48. Okay. And on the second day of non-compliance, a stop work order issued. So we've tightened that up by a day and also provided a penalty. Okay. Okay, does anybody have questions before we open the public hearing? Any I do other have questions? one, one yep. quick question. Um, Randy, with regard to this, when, when the hurricane was coming um, and the, all the contractors were told that they had to uh, cover the containers that were in the yards for where the homes are being built and so forth, um, one contractor in particular threw dirt on top of the pile of stuff that was in the dumpster. Is that considered acceptable? I'm not aware of that instance, but I know we were scrambling at the end when they closed the landfill early. And so no, no more dumpsters could be pulled from the site. So we were trying to secure what was in them the best we could. As part of this chapter seven, if you look under contractor infractions, I'd added item 36 because we had no means to enforce this activity prior to this. Okay. We do now. Um, I know that there was a, a, a kind of a civil matter going on with a citizen that lived next door to one of these dumpsters. That's why I'm asking the question. Um, they were under the impression that the actual dumpster should be covered with some kind of a tarp of some kind and secured, but what, what the contractor did was just throw dirt, and it wasn't a lot of dirt, it was just enough dirt to kind of hold down some of the loose debris that was in the dumpster. So I just if wanted- If it accomplishes the purpose, I'd be open to it. We had another contractor used pallets and then strapped the pallets down for lack of a tarp, which worked, that was on Turtle Dove. That would certainly be better than what this guy did because the dirt that they threw on top did not serve the purpose, is, I guess the, that was why I was asking the question. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's why with the, the requirements we put in, I put in this new rewrite, um, I'll have more lead time to inspect and enforce it. Okay. Be acceptable, and it's, it's to be acceptable to the building official. Sure, okay. I like the fact that this has been rewritten so it doesn't sound so nasty. It sounded like somebody was really angry when they wrote this ordinance. <laughs> there was some verbiage in there that was like, you're gonna, be, you're gonna go to jail if you don't do this. Um, but I, I, I think it's, it sounds more professional and more proactive rather than reactive, and I, I'm, I'm happy with the changes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd agree. This is a public hearing. If you would like to speak on GA 07-17, now would be the time. Would anybody like to speak on this public hearing? Anybody? Now would be the time to speak on GA 07-17. Last call to speak on this public hearing. Move to close public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay. Move approval of GA-07-17. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve GA 07-17 with the, so with the changes. With the changes? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. We have no quasi-judicial public hearings or second readings. Um, that'll bring us to the consent agenda, which there are two sets of minutes, one for the workshop, one for the regular meeting, and uh, legal department invoices. Would anybody like to pull any of those items? No. Okay. Citizens' comments on consent agenda. If you would like to speak on those two sets of minutes or the legal invoices that are on the consent agenda, now would be the time. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion. Move approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Okay. Now we are moving into our regular agenda. So if you want to speak on anything in the regular agenda, it's about to be time for citizens' comments on the progress report for the capital improvement projects, the Harbor Walk Area 2 final construction plan development, the boat speeds in Punta Gorda canals, and the discussion of poli policies and rental fees for Gilchrist Park. We also have a settlement of uh, 1601 Tamiami Trail. So if you would like to speak on any of those items, now would be the time. Please take this podium over here to my right and you have three minutes. Regular agenda, now would be the time to comment.
Hi, my name is Sheila Yeager. First, um, council members and, and Mr. Kunick, thank you for this opportunity to speak. I'm speaking about uh, the Harbor Walk West plans. And um, basically, I'm a biker and I'm a walker too. And I have different feelings about what's been done already in Har Harbor Walk East. Um, I made these feelings pretty plain previously, I think, with uh, things that I sent. Um, but I wanted to speak now for uh, some of the other thing for some of the other people that aren't here. Um, first, I refer you to the City of Punta Gorda's Parks and Recreation Master Plan Survey Results, dated 2009. And one question asked on this survey, which I understand you folks did, was what makes the city of Punta Gorda Parks different from other local parks? And the answer that appeared at the top of your list was nostalgia, landscapes, small town feel. Um, others on the list were natural beauty, peace and quiet. Another question on the survey was what should the city of Punta Gorda do to improve parks and recreation system? And the top of the list there was better upkeep of existing parks. Others on the list, more color and better landscaping. When the charrette was done for Gilchrist Park, and I can't remember the date, I saw the list of comments on um, the, at the table for the planned 30, 30 foot wide harbor walk. And as far as I could see, the remarks universally condemned the harbor walk design as being too wide. Now I know you settled on a lesser, dis, uh, a lesser width, but it's still too wide. Hopefully all of you have taken a few moments out of your busy days to go down and, and, and stand at the end of the Harbor Walk, the east end, and look all the way down. And if that is just ends up being a big expanse of concrete all the way along that harbor front, it's gonna change the whole character of the park. It's almost a visual shock, a broad expanse of concrete. Uh, it's not pedestrian friendly, it's heat absorbing and radiating, it's expensive and it's unnatural. And the uh, landscaping around it is, is unimaginative and boring. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's an issue with East Harbor Walk where we know that the, the guitar Iman comes in, a lot of musicians, pavilions, and uh, West Harbor Walk where there's going to be a playground and um, Maybe it could just be a little bit more pedestrian friendly down at one end, the park at least. We just don't need all of that concrete. Thank you. Citizens comments, regular agenda. Um, okay, I'm back to cause more trouble. Um, what I'd like to Speak do- your name. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Julie <laughs> McGillivray. Um, um, good morning, Mrs. Mayor and City Council. Um, I tried to come up with some constructive ideas and uh, some different ideas to enhance the park, to utilize, to work within the existing design. So these are just a couple of ideas as we move forward. Um, a, little, a little difficult to see, but um, a lot of people or some people have complained about the concrete, okay? but I understand the functionality of the width uh, for bikers, for walkers, et cetera. So perhaps we can use, utilize something like um, um, keeping in keeping with our mur mural theme, putting in um, um, some fun artwork along, along the Harbor Walk. So something that's really catchy, that draws attention, I think could bring some people into the park. Um, there are some three-dimensional clever things that I've seen online. So I, I've got some examples here for us in terms of artwork that can actually be put along the Harbor Walk. Um, so we can uh, invite local artists to participate. So here's one idea. Secondly, for the, if you wanna move on to the shade ideas. Okay. Um, obviously having um, natural palm trees is great and I'm sure that that's part of the plan. plan. I don't have, uh, since I haven't heard, the. Uh, Mitchell's entire plan, I'm sure he'll address that issue when I saw it, but uh, these are some other things that other cities have done for some shade, and you see that they um, even put some seating, so that would be kind of cool, and that would um, very well utilize the width of the Harbor Walk as well. Um, 
Thirdly, um, this came up this morning, the guitar army and uh, the importance of, of, of honoring our heritage with the guitar army. Um, we left the existing pavilion, as you see, um, over by the compass, and perhaps we can in the future at some point utilize some sort of a band shell or guitar army um, pavilion. And here are some signage ideas. So you can even recognize again um, the importance of the guitar army to our city. And these are the sorts of signs perhaps that we can put within the park. So you could have a sign, something like the one that says Dave's uh, by the new pavilion, if that's in the, in the cards, um, as well as throughout the park, some different cute little things like this to recognize the guitar army. Um, lastly, um, parking in the, um, parking within the park on the grass, I'm against it because I think moving along that we should have a garden path within the spine or the interior of the park. Um, we haven't done much with landscaping. And I'd love to see uh, the community you know, get involved with enhanced landscaping throughout the park. Um, Thank you. Okay, thanks. Citizens' comments, regular agenda. Please state your name. You have three minutes. My name is Norman Ashworth. I'm chairman of the Code Enforcement Board, and I'd like to speak to the proposed settlement at 1601 Tamiami Trail. <clears throat> this incident started in October of, of 2015, and our first fine for lack of compliance was in May of 2016. The outstanding city st uh, staff in the code compliance uh, office plus the board try to educate and help citizens and businesses comply with the code. The fines have accumulated to about $115,000. The <coughs> respondent asked uh, the board for a uh, reduction in the fine, the board unanimously declined to reduce the fine. And we would just like to urge the city council not to play Santa Claus and cut that substantial fine substantially. We think it would set a bad precedent for other people who are fined and we hope that the board's unanimous decision to keep the fine in its present position is upheld. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. My name is Nina Schumann. I live on Deborah Drive. I've lived here about six years. And I just wanted to comment. I sent an email to the city, I'm not sure it went to the correct address, regarding the restroom situation in Gilchrist Park. And I apologize that I don't really think I'm up to speed on the process that has gone into the restroom issues, but I understand part of the problem is maybe got to do with the fact that it's a waterfront location. And the email I sent was to share personal experience and living in, um, on, on the marsh in Salisbury, Massachusetts, and our state reservation, which is what they call the state parks up there, has for at least 20 years had composting toilets uh, at the Salisbury Beach Reservation. Um, they, they don't smell particularly. Um, they have zero maintenance. They don't um, pollute the water, and I think that's something that we should consider in installing new restroom facilities in Gilchrist Park and if we are gonna renovate any other waterfront restroom facilities. And I, I sent the name of the, the most famous one in New England is Cletus Moultrum, the composting toilet. I'd just like the town to consider that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anybody else? Regular agenda. Now would be the time. Make your way to the podium. Yes, I'm Burt Jones. I've lived for 15 years on Pompano Canal, and I'm here today to give the 